Hey y'all, I'm Mandy and this is Mandy in the making. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another Winter Dinners where I'm going to show you three really easy and delicious meals. If you are new here, I do food content all of the time. So if you feel like you're in a rut and you're always looking for new recipes that you think your family will enjoy, you have found the place. Go ahead and hit subscribe. For our first Winter Dinner, it is Sunday. We just got back from church and I need a quick lunch. This meal is gonna take 15 to 20 minutes to make. It is Mongolian beef noodles using ground beef. To get started, I'm just gonna add a pound of ground beef to this large skillet that has the high sides. I've got this heated to medium high. And I've got this large pot of water boiling. I'm not gonna add any salt to it, but we are going to cook about 10 ounces of linguine noodles in here and we'll drain those and add them to our ground beef mixture in just a bit. Our ground beef is almost done cooking, so I'm gonna go ahead and add in our ginger. We're gonna add in around four teaspoons of ginger paste, and we're gonna be adding a lot of garlic, probably about the amount of six cloves. Now we're just gonna let the beef cook the remainder of the way along with this ginger and garlic. Okay, my ground beef is done and it is extremely lean, so I don't have to worry about draining it. If you have a lot of fat, go ahead and drain yours at this point. Now I'm gonna add in a half a cup of low sodium soy sauce and a half a cup, cup of beef broth. We need a half a cup of brown sugar. This is a fourth a cup, so I'm gonna add two of these. I'm gonna do a half a teaspoon each of black pepper and some crushed red pepper. You could definitely leave that crushed red pepper out if you don't like spicy. Lastly, I'm gonna add in four tablespoons of hoisin sauce. Our noodles are done, let's go drain them. I'm gonna make a cornstarch slurry to thicken our sauce. I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of cornstarch and two tablespoons of water. Let's add our cornstarch slurry to our sauce. We're gonna stir it to combine and wait for it to thicken up just a little bit. Our sauce has thickened, so let's add our noodles in. I'm gonna turn the heat down as well to low. And we're just going to stir this and combine it, get the noodles really coated in the sauce. And then it's gonna be time to eat. This smells incredible. He was not in there for the making of this, so he has no idea. I don't know. He's gonna love it though. Oh, man, I can just tell these noodles are coated really good. Nope. Mmm. Man, that is so good. And the flavors that are in that. Right. You got ginger in this? Yes. You got garlic in this? Yes. Soy sauce. Mm -hmm. There's something sugary in it. There's some sweetness. There's, there's brown sugar. Put spice in there too. I'm getting a little I put heat. some red pepper flakes. Okay. And I put some hoisin sauce in there too. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Well, that definitely made it a little more authentic too, that hoisin sauce. But man, the flavors in these noodles, that is incredible. <laughs> That's really good. Mr. Chopsticks over there. Mm hmm. Hmm. 15 minute meal, what you think? Worth every minute. <laughs> That's what I think. All right, it's I'm really gonna good. dig in. Cole isn't here, so he can't give us his opinion. His seat is empty. But this is really not his type of meal anyway, so it was perfect that I made it when he wasn't here. This is better than takeout. Y'all should definitely give this a try. Wow. It is our second night, and tonight we are cooking in the Instant Pot. You could definitely do this in the Crock Pot if you don't have an Instant Pot. This is called Chicken and Dumplings. But it's not just chicken and dumplings, it's crack chicken and dumplings. And if you know what that means, it means it's got bacon and it's got ranch powder as well and a good bit of cheese. What's this mean? Oh, what's it mean? Huh? Yeah. Does it mean you're gonna get cheese? Yeah. <laughs> it moved. Oh. It's still moving. Oh no. I bet it's got some stuff. Yeah, it does. I need to wipe it off. 
What had happened? I don't know. Why? <laughs> Gracie's like, can we please? He's like, can we get on with this? Okay. Okay. We're good. I know, Gracie. Give me just a second. <laughs> Give me the cheese. He was not being nice to me, but he said, give me some. Well, you were nice. not being I'm nice. nice. I'm rewarding bad behavior. <laughs> uh... <laughs> to get started, I'm gonna turn this on to saute, and we're gonna wait for it to get hot. Now that our Instant Pot is hot, let's add in six slices of bacon. I'd already cut this up. While our bacon is cooking, I'm gonna add a little bit of pepper. When the bacon grease is popping, you just pull this down over it, and now you don't get popped. I'm a genius. <laughs> Leave me <Hey>. alone. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's done. Okay, so now we're gonna take the bacon out, and most of the grease will leave like a tablespoon or so behind. We're gonna take it out and Put it in this bowl. Now we're just gonna add in one medium onion that I've already diced. And we're just gonna saute these for like three or four minutes to get them really soft. And then we'll add in some garlic as well. In this last minute or so, I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of minced garlic. Now we want to deglaze the bottom of our pan. I've got three cups of chicken broth. I'm just gonna scrape the bottom of our pan really well. Okay, now we're gonna add in about a pound and a half of chicken. I've got about a pound of chicken thighs and about a half a pound of chicken breasts. She knows what's out. Uh-huh, you know, don't you? Now let's add in three tablespoons of ranch powder. Stuck to the bottom. There we go. And we're gonna add 16 ounces of mixed veggies. These are frozen and they are still frozen and that's okay. And now we're gonna top it with our biscuit pieces. I had 12 ounces of biscuits that I cut or I quartered each biscuit. You just wanna drop these in. You are not gonna stir these around. Okay, that's it for now. Let's put the lid on. Turn it to ceiling. Let's turn this off. And we are gonna pressure cook this for three minutes. And then we're gonna naturally let it release for about 10 minutes. Okay, this is done. It's been sitting here or naturally releasing for eight minutes. You could do it for five to 10 minutes. Oh, nine minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and let the rest of the steam out. I'm gonna add one and a half cups of half and half into this bowl. And now what we're gonna do is temper our half and half. So I'm gonna reach in here and get some of the soupy mixture and bring it over to our half and half. And let's just stir that around. I'll add a little more. There we go. Now let's pour our half and half into the pot. And we're gonna add in a cup of cheese and our bacon. Oh man, that smells so good. We're gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper. Well, we're gonna add Auntie no -Nos. I do wanna add some more pepper though. What you think, babe? Go for it. Okay, this is done, let's eat.
This chicken and dumplings night. It you is. know how many times we've had chicken and dumplings in this house? Tell them. This will be our first time. Correct. I'm not the biggest fan of chicken and dumplings. Well, we're going to put this one to the test. I know. Mmm. Wow. <laughs> That's really good. The dumpling sauce or soup or whatever you want to yeah. call it is absolutely amazing. Yay. Lots of flavor. I love the texture of the dumpling too. Really? Yes. I was kind of a little bit... It was a little scary. A little, little bit concerned about the yeah. biscuit turning out right, but it is just soft, just like you would expect a dumpling, dumpling to be. be. Yeah. So that is right there on point. Get the chicken bits in here. Mm. Oh, Cole likes it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. I love the creaminess of this. And then you've got the, the, uh, the broccoli, giving it that yeah. You know, making it more of a full flavor there with yeah. the broccoli and carrots. Can you tell there's ranch in there too? Not so much. Okay. Which is good. I mean. Yeah. You don't want it to be overpowering. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I want to try this. I'll let y'all know what I think. You've already had the cheese. You're good to go. Yeah. You're good. You, no, you don't need any. Okay. I went back and added more dumplings to mine because I only had like one. I'm pretty sure I only had one, maybe two. So I added more. Again, I haven't ever made chicken and dumplings, but this is better than any other chicken and dumplings I've ever had in my life. The flavors are out of this world. Yes, they're really good. So, so good. This is exceptional. Yeah, very impressed. Y'all gotta try this one. It is our third night and that means it's subby supper night. Tonight's hubby supper comes from Karina and it is more of a side dish. This would be great in the summer. It's really all year round. We're excited tonight because it is a low carb side dish and we're gonna have pretty much a low carb meal tonight for dinner. It is lunchtime now. I am gonna make this and put it in the fridge just so that it kind of sets up, sets up <laughs> this afternoon. But this is a cauliflower salad. Karina and her husband, Will, have been married for 40 years. They have two grown up children and they also have a dog named Zoe, who is a Springer Spaniel. Her name may be Zoe, but they, they call her Lou Who, which we call Gracie that sometimes because we call Gracie, Gracie Lou, and sometimes we call her Lou Who. Karina loves to bake, and then she said she also likes to keep busy by crafting and beading. And she said this cauliflower salad is one that has been passed down in her family. I believe she got this from her aunt, and anytime they have get-togethers, this is always there. We're excited because, heads up, just in case you didn't know, it's got bacon in it. Anytime I see bacon, I'm all in. <laughs> but thank you, Karina, for sending this over. We're excited to give it a try tonight. I'm gonna make it now, stick it in the fridge, and then I will see y'all back in a little bit. One quick thing I wanted to mention is that I'm pretty much cutting this recipe in half. She said to use a large head of cauliflower. I have a pretty small head, and that's just because it's just the three of us. We're not trying to share this recipe with anyone. But the original recipe, her recipe, will be linked in the description box. Not linked, typed out. Okay, I've got a skillet that I am heating to about medium high. I've got about a half a pound of bacon here. I'm just gonna cut it up into small pieces and we're gonna fry this up. While our bacon is cooking on the stove, I am going to chop up this head of cauliflower. Because that was such a small head of cauliflower, I'm gonna add in just a little bit of broccoli as well. You definitely don't have to do this, but I only had this much cauliflower and I felt like I needed a little bit more and I have some broccoli on hand, so we're just gonna use that up. The next thing I need to do is just chop up some of this red onion. I'm not gonna use the whole thing, maybe not even quite half. You're welcome. Let's assemble our salad. I'm gonna add in our cauliflower and our little bit of broccoli, our diced onion. You can add salt and pepper at this point, but I'm just gonna use anti no nos instead. This is an everything seasoning if you're new here. I've got it linked in my description box below. It is not yet in grocery stores, but I think it will be eventually. It's really good. One thing I forgot to show you in the beginning was that we need lemon. I'm just gonna add about, I don't know, a couple of teaspoons of lemon juice. So just the juice of a half of a lemon. Let's mix all of this together. 
Now I'm gonna add in about a cup of sharp cheddar cheese. She said you could even go with extra sharp on this. You definitely want this to be a sharp cheese. And we're gonna add in our bacon. I did drain it off. Let's mix all of that together. Now we're gonna add our mayonnaise and this is where it becomes what you prefer. She did not give me an amount. She said she guesstimates about a cup to a cup and a half for the full recipe. It's just enough to hold the, the salad together. So I'm gonna go with about this much, maybe a little more. I'm out of this one, but you know I'm not out. Let me go grab my other one. Okay, that's probably a little more than half a cup of mayo right there. I'm gonna go ahead and stir this around and just see where we're at if I need more. I don't want it swimming in mayo, that's what she said, but she said that you just want it to be able to kind of bind everything together. I think this is gonna be the perfect amount. Uh-oh, one got away. To top it all off, I'm gonna add just a little more anti no -nos. And I'm gonna put a lid on this and we're gonna put this in the fridge and it will be our side dish for dinner tonight. Okay, it is much later. It is 6.37. So I made the cauliflower salad this morning or around lunchtime. And we had planned on making hamburger steaks with caramelized onions and some gravy, and then we were gonna have a cauliflower salad. But we had a late lunch, number one, and I've got a bit of a headache this afternoon. I'm just not feeling my greatest, and I don't feel like making hamburger steaks and just like messing up the kitchen. So, it's chicken nuggets night. <laughs> this is the Members Mark chicken bites. It's very much like Chick-fil-A's chicken nuggets. I've got my air fryer out here. I know you can't see it, but it's right here. And I'm just gonna preheat it and put the chicken nuggets in. We're gonna have chicken nuggets and then that salad as a side and call it good. I just don't feel like cooking. It's about as real as it gets. <laughs> Try some of this salad here with this bacon and cheese in there. I think it's gonna be a good one. Oh yeah. You like that? Oh man. Wow, the flavor and the um, the dressing or whatever that's mm -hmm. on there. It's just mayonnaise. It has a little bit of lemon juice. Yeah, but then that bacon. Yeah. With the lemon juice and the seasonings you put in there. Mm -hmm. There's a rich richness to this the uh, the dressing, and then the bacon hits it. Awesome. Wow. Good side dish. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm excited to give it a try. We've got our Chick Fil A sauce. Steven's got mm. Woo's hot sauce on top of his. Mmm. He's got red onion too. Mmm. <laughs> He's having fun over there. All right, thank you so much, Karina, for sending this in. I'll come back on after I take a bite as well. I'd say Cole liked it. Very good. <laughs> the fact that he ate all of that before he even touched his chicken, that's a big deal. This is very tasty. I love this. Mm -hmm. This is something when we do picnics at church this summer, mm -hmm. I can see me making this a, yeah. in a large quantity to take to church. Absolutely. Yeah, this is so, so good. Thank you, Karina. And that's going to be it for this week. I hope you enjoyed the three recipes that we shared. This week was knocking it out of the park. It was really good. And if you haven't already, would love for you to join my YouTube family. Hit that red subscribe button before you go. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and I will see you next week. Bye. Welcome back to another winter dinners where I'm gonna show you three winter dinners. <laughs> Insta pot. Insta. Insta. I'm losing my glasses. Insta pot. Instant. Insta ut. It's hard for me to say. I know. It's easier to say Insta. I think a lot of people what, say Insta. Where did that come from? Instagram? <gasps> That's right. What What's an Instagram? Instagram? I, I want one. Okay. <laughs> All right, serious face. <laughs> <laughs>